Creating an income in music isn't that hard, but growing and scaling that income can be. And it's easy to get stuck in a rut, not knowing what changes or tweaks to make to cause a breakthrough. What's the number one thing getting in the way of creating an income in music? That's what we're going to be looking at in this episode of the New Music Industry Podcast. So you may have looked at the title of today's podcast and thought to yourself, I know what he's going to be talking about, fear, right? Well, sure, fear is always a factor, but unless we define exactly what that looks like for you, we're not going to get anywhere with this. Talking about fear is kind of like talking about sauces. There are different colors, different flavors, different textures. Ketchup is different from barbecue sauce and barbecue sauce is different from hot sauce. So no, we're not talking directly about fear. But if you'd like to find out what you're doing that's getting in the way of generating an income into music, keep listening. Here are the key questions I want you to ask right now. And this might be a good time to get your pen and journal out. Have you ever missed out? on amazing opportunities because you simply didn't have the resources necessary to be able to pursue it. Things like that have totally come up in my life. One opportunity that I was glad to be able to pursue because I did manage to somehow scrape together the resources was investing in a music industry startup. Unfortunately, it went belly up within about three years, but it was a great opportunity, or at least it looked like it at the time. So I'm still glad I have that experience behind me, even though I'm not going to get that 60K back. Do you feel like you're spending a ton of time and effort and energy on activity that's not producing sales? Do you feel like the rewards are not proportional to your work ethic? Do you keep doing things every single week to move your career forward, only it doesn't actually seem to be moving your career forward? Do you feel like you're not getting the recognition that you deserve? Do you feel underappreciated? Does the thought of waking up one more day to repeat the same tasks and activity that you did yesterday feel like a big weight on your shoulders? I sometimes feel like that lately, to be honest, with the leadership program that I'm taking. It is confronting that way, but that's how we expand. Do you feel like you're stuck and you'll never break out of the glass ceiling? So do any of those questions resonate with you? Do any of those ring true? Let's get this on the court now. What are some real life specific examples that you can think of? I'll offer a few ideas. Do you feel like you never get any comments on your social media posts? That used to be something I watched a lot more closely. (laughs) At one point, I kind of lost interest in social media for a while and I've come back. There is definitely a reason and a purpose for it. I don't think it's a super highway for getting music sales, but it is one way to get your message out there. So have you ever felt like you're not getting any comments on your social media posts? And are you basing some of your self-worth or your sense of advancement in your music career on that? Does it feel like no matter how many videos you post on YouTube, your views rarely if ever go up and your subscriber count only goes up gradually? I used to collaborate with these guys who made video game videos and They were diligent and they were definitely entertaining and funny and they were super, super consistent. But it seemed like no matter how much they published, it was always one to 10 views. And I'm pretty certain that story is not unique to them. You may have that experience as well. Or something like, are you having trouble growing your email list? Without a tool like lead pages, this is not an ad, but without a tool like that, I don't know how you're building your email list. Maybe you could use ClickFunnels or something like that. But the point is you probably need some kind of tool to make that happen. And if you're using a tool like that and you're still struggling, how does that feel? Okay. Now let's talk about the real cause of your struggle. Are you ready for what the real cause of your struggle is? Do you want to know what's getting in the way of creating greater income in music? Well, it has nothing to do with a lack of opportunity or even the lack of tools. There's more than there ever was. I'm actually amazed at the number of YouTube personalities talking about this as if they know anything besides YouTube advertising and sponsorships, because frankly, it doesn't seem like they have a clue that there are more sources of income in music and ever. Do you got to think outside the box? Yeah. 
Do you have to be more vigilant and diligent about doing your research and going out there and discovering them? Yeah, but that's why people like me exist, to connect you with those types of opportunities. So here's the real answer. Here's what's really getting in the way of you increasing your income in music. It's busy work. Yeah, yeah, that's where your time's going. We've all been given a huge daily to-do list, right? Listen to different marketers and you're sure to come up with some crazy mile long to-do list that includes following 10 people on Instagram, writing a blog post, sending an email, scheduling 30 tweets, updating your website all before 12 PM. <laughs> and then you've got a rehearsal who knows, right? Uh, all I'm saying is that to-do list is a mile long and all that activity might not be leading anywhere or you might not be seeing the desired results from it. Now I'm not saying you should stop doing all that. If it's working for you, then you need to keep doing it. Keep what works. The trick is in noticing what's working and investing more of your time and your energy there. So we want to begin to separate the things that are working from the things that are not working to spend more time on the things that are working. That's basically 80-20. But why don't we keep doing what works? There's actually some deep-seated reasons for this. Because this all really sounds easy, doesn't it? Like, just, oh, just go do what works and just go do more of that. And if you're doing some even basic spreadsheet tracking, you should have an idea. Well, you know what gets in the way of doing what works, of continually doing what works, of consistently doing it? It's called discomfort because the activity that's producing results usually causes some form of discomfort, which is with us. And what is, whatever is uncomfortable, we tend not to return to. It's human nature. So if you've felt some kind of discomfort from an engaging in an activity and it produced results, but it still left you feeling like there was something wrong in that communication, there's a chance that you're not repeating the behavior that is getting you results. So what is the solution to all this? In a word, it's sales or selling. If there's one skill every musician or entrepreneur should get good at, it's selling. If you're complaining about results you're not getting, you're probably not selling or selling enough. And this goes back to what I said about discomfort because selling is one of those activities we usually identify with discomfort. You know what's funny is that some people seem to think I'm always making pitches. <laughs> and, and it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard because most of what I've done, I've done as a service to musicians and the music business at large. And for listeners like you, I've noticed about myself that whenever I go into selling mode, this is something I'm starting to discover for myself. I always feel like there's something wrong. I will pick up on a little piece of feedback or a harsh comment, or I will think to myself, oh man, I, I pushed them too hard. I shouldn't have done that. Or I've even literally been told at speaking engagements to not sell my books and CDs, <laughs> even though I couldn't stop anyone from coming to my car afterwards to buy them out of my trunk anyway. It used to be that I couldn't see this about myself, that I had that strong association with selling that I was doing something wrong or doing something I shouldn't be doing. And so the results from all the other busy work I do is quite predictable, right? I already know what I can likely expect from a blog post or podcast episode, which has a certain ROI, but perhaps not compared to some of the activity I could be prioritizing. So it's in the selling that results are produced no matter how harsh the critics or how bad I feel or you feel for using psychology and other techniques to sell, most of this is actually in our mind and has nothing to do what's going on in the real world. There's always a way to answer objections and that's not to become defensive, that's to acknowledge what was said and reassure the client or reassure the potential prospect. I recently read one of Russell Brunson's eBooks and he says, if you don't have time to do anything else in your business on a weekly basis, host one weekly webinar, web class, web event, or web whatever of some kind. And that's the habit that I'm personally looking to get into. What is one thing you could do consistently in your schedule so you're facing your fear and doing what's uncomfortable instead of getting lost in the busy work that doesn't move the needle on your music career? I look forward to hearing your thoughts. So if you're ready to stop doing what doesn't work 
If you want to start prioritizing the right things, if you want to stop getting lost in busy work or let discomfort get in the way of what you want out of your music career, I want to invite you to pick up a copy of my best-selling guide, The Music Entrepreneur Code. Go to musicentrepreneurhq.com slash code to get the special edition PDF ebook. This has been episode 247 of the New Music Industry Podcast. I'm David Anjoui, and I look forward to seeing you on the stages of the world. Thank you for listening. Music in this episode was brought to you by Brian Young. Wherever you're listening to this right now, please consider leaving a five-star review and comment to help us get the word out about the podcast. Thank you.